News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Oh, chef extraordinaire, host of Chuck's Day Off, has a brand new show here to tell us all about it. Chuck Hughes, welcome back. Nice How's to see you. How's it going? Very well. Uh, this new show called Chuck's Week Off. Uh, what are you doing this show? Yeah, from Chuck's Day Off to Chuck's, Chuck's Week, week Off. off yeah. you know, I can't wait for Chuck's Year Off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Chuck's sabbatical. That's yeah, there you go. A few years. There you yeah. go. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's coming soon. Uh, well, you know, Chuck's Day Off is obviously it's a how-to cooking show. It's in my restaurant in Montreal. Um, and it's a great experience, but... You know, I got into the cooking world when I was a teenager to, one, travel, see the world, uh, you know, kind of have that skill to be able to travel and see different things. And then I opened my restaurant six or six and a half years ago, and I've been there ever since. And I haven't had a chance to really get out of the kitchen, if you will. And at one point I said, you know, all these new young kids are coming in. They're 21, 22 years old. They're looking for me for inspiration. You know, they're looking to me for inspiration. And uh, not that I'm not inspired, but I felt like I'd been in Montreal and I'd been at the restaurant for for you know for six years right. and i said i need to go out in the world and and learn new things uh, and it's really really the honest truth you know it's really i need to get out there and 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 see new things and try new things and learn new cooking techniques philosophies try new flavors whatever it is uh and decided to go to mexico because i thought it would be Why a mexico? great uh, you know, for, for, for a lot of reasons. First reason, uh, I knew a little bit of Spanish. I wanted to perfect that. So I was there for almost two months. So I got to speak a lot of Spanish, which was great. Um, it's a country that uh, we seem to think we know a lot of, but we don't know much about. Uh, you know, the food that we do know is pretty much not authentic. Uh, you know, the hard shell tacos. And it's it's basically coined as mostly as fast food and unhealthy food, which is to totally is not true. And then it's just a huge... Um, vast country with the ocean, the desert, volcanoes, mountains, jungles. Uh, and I, I thought, you know, it would be fun to travel that whole country because you'd get a whole different kind of terrain and, and food and people. When you were there, what surprised you most, most during your time there? Uh, I, I guess what surprised me most is, is how comfortable and how, how easy life is here. Um, you know, I've born and raised in Montreal. I've been here my whole life. You know, we have water, we have you know a roof over our head we never we never second guess these things you know what i mean and in mexico especially when we're cooking in mexico uh you know water was always complicated uh you know you always had to think and really think about you know what you needed where you're going to get your water from how you're going to get your heat source uh it was just everything is just that much more complicated but i realized people there are interested in in you know food love family you know, throw in a little Jesus, and uh, you're happy. You know what I mean? Here we need we need all the, you know, we need Wi-Fi, iPads, we need all kinds of stuff. But down there, they're they're you know they're they're happy just to be um, alive, eating well, and surrounded by people who love them. Uh, here's a text question: Where did you find your passion, and how could someone find some in the kitchen? Oh, uh, well, it's a good question. I mean, I, I always say, like, the first ingredient to a, a career in cooking has to be passion because it's long hours, low pay, <laughs> back-breaking work. Uh, so if, if you want to make it in the restaurant business, you definitely need to be passionate and love what you do. I think that's probably a, a good thing to say in general. Uh, whatever job you want to do, uh, you need to be passionate. But food and cooking, especially because it is such... Uh, an everyday thing, you know, every day is a new day. You're working with live um, ingredients. Everything is of the essence, you know what I mean? Like, it, everything is now. Like, you can't have a case of tomatoes and, and think about it for three months, you know? You gotta, you gotta move. And take me back to when you were in uh, culinary school. It was your mom who suggested that you do that, right? Yeah, when you were... my mom suggests everything. Yeah, okay, now when she did that, when you are in culinary school, did you ever think that you would do as well as you, you, you've done? Wow. I didn't think I was going to make it past 30, let's be honest. <laughs> I, uh, I, it was either cooking school or juvie. So, um, you know, I, it was uh, when I was in cooking school, I honestly, it, the first day I got there, when I chopped an onion, that's the first thing you do in cooking school, they teach you how to chop an onion. I, and it sounds stupid, but when I, when I really, when I chopped that onion and I looked around at the class and I said, man, finally I belong somewhere. 
You know what I mean? All of high school, you know, I was great in high school in terms of socializing, networking, making friends, gym class. Yeah. You know, the rest it was pretty much a write off. So <laughs> when I got to cooking school, I looked around and I said, man, I could probably be uh, as good as anybody in this class and, and actually probably excel. So I found, I really found my true passion when I cut my first onion. Okay, an interesting text question. Anthony Bourdain's career path from chef to traveling TV host seems to have inspired many of his peers. Has this been the case for you? Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I never once thought about TV and, and anything else but cooking. You know, my big, big dream was to open my 40-seat restaurant in, in old Montreal, and that was that was kind of as far as I, I went in terms of dreaming. And people today will always ask me. That's probably the one question that I get the most is like, you know, man, you're living the dream. You know, you're really living. And I, and I tell them I never dreamt that big. I never thought this any of this could happen. Um, so, you know, I am I happy that I'm doing this? Yeah. Do I enjoy it? Yeah. Uh, it's offered me a whole new, different world. You know what I mean? I literally, from chopping carrots, I've been around the world. You know, I've traveled through <laughs> Asia, through Mexico, through Europe, uh, Canada, the U.S. I mean, I, I've been, honestly, I've been around the world from uh, from deep frying calamari. So I, I can't complain. <laughs> I am living a dream in some way. Right. I'll read it to you. Tell me what you think. Yeah. It's from Claire. Claire says, if the three major party leaders walked into your restaurant today, what would you serve each one of them if you were given the option to choose for them? And why would you choose that dish? First of all, I don't think that any of those guys can get in, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but if they were there, you know, t the thing with me is I'm not very political, to be honest with you. Um, and the honest answer is people are people. No matter what political party they choose to stand behind, they deserve to eat. All right. What's your absolute favorite dish to cook and why? Ooh, good question. Um, favorite thing to cook. I mean, still to this day, shucking an oyster is probably the most favorite thing. I, I just love to do that. But probably searing a piece of fish. Very simply just searing a piece of fish. I still get great pleasure no matter how many times I do it. Um, a really hot pan, some hot oil, and that, it's really that sizzle that just, it's an addiction. When you hear that sizzle, you know, I, I just love it. So that's probably one of my favorite things. Another text question. Every time I see Chuck at one of his restaurants, he's busy doing everything but cooking, cleaning fridges, wiping down counters, doing all the stuff you never see on TV. He's like the Mr. Clean of Chefdom. By the way, at dinner at his new place, Bremner, it was one of the best meals I've had all year. Okay, who is this person and are you married? <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's what we don't show on TV, and that's that's the one thing that people don't understand is cooking is all about cleanliness. It, it's the first thing. It's the first step to everything. You always have to be clean, and, and you know it's funny. Because but all chefs don't think like that, do you? They should. They yeah. should. I mean, and the, the pro all the good ones do. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a big part of the business. I mean, you're pl you're, you know. People are there to eat your food. Uh, you know, the most important thing is to be clean, uh, to work in a, in a proper manner and to have to everything sure on ice. Get sick. Yeah, exactly. Refrigerated, cross-contamination. There's a whole bunch of things. And that's something that we take, we take very, very seriously. And that being said, you know, at the restaurant now, because I'm kind of in and out all the time, the guys, the guys really take care of the food. So I can't, even if I want to get in, they're like, they nudge me out of the way. They're like, chef, get out of here. This is my station. You know, they, they have pride and ownership of their station. Yeah. So it's hard to sneak in there. Once in a while, you know, to make a poutine or whatever, I, I can sneak in. <laughs> but it's hard. I mean, they, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the dishes, which is, by the way, very, very important. You know, if you don't have clean dishes, I can't put food on the plate. So, you know, uh, the restaurant's a lot of teamwork. So I'm happy that somebody noticed that. But that's, you know, dishwashing is just as important as bartending, as being a busboy, and, you know, and being the chef. So it's, it's a real team effort. And this one.